Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is Bruna. Today, as you can see, we are going to be learning how to crochet this beautiful inspired straw hat for you to enjoy the summertime. So if you want to learn to crochet this beautiful and easy hat, come along and let's crochet together, but in my studio. Let's go! So here's everything I'm going to be using for today's project, starting with this beautiful yarn in which is the Thai Sublime by Teslan.com. This yarn is a little bit different, it's a corded yarn and it's perfect for bags and summer hat, just like the one that we are doing in today's video because the yarn makes the project nice and sturdy, so for the brim this is going to be perfect. I'm going to be leaving all the materials and this yarn linked in the description if you want to check it out. And this yarn is a worsted number four, if you are wondering. And for the tools, I am using a small pair of scissors, a 5.5 millimeters hook, tapestry needle so that we can do all the sewings and the weave-ins, and then very important, a tape measure so that we can measure all the different parts of the summer hat. And then maybe I'm going to be using some stitch markers and the clips so that we can sew them things together and also maybe mark some stitches down but not sure yet if I'm going to use just mentioning just in case. So yeah these are all the materials now we can start with the actual hat and I'm going to be starting with the crown of the hat and for that I am using the hazel shade. So starting the crown we are going to be doing a magic ring. How I do my magic ring I hold the end of the yarn right at the back of my index and middle finger and then I just wrap it around it, crossing it on the side, moving it to the front and then I go under the first yarn, the first loop and then I just grab the one at the back and now I can release it and here we have the magic ring, the magic circle. And I'm going to be starting with a chain of one in which is not going to count as a stitch and we are going to be doing eight half double crochets going around the ring. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight half double crochets. So once you have the eight half double crochets, we can now pull the end of the magic ring and close the circle. Pull nice and tight until you feel that it's secured in place. It's going to kind of lock it in place. You will feel it. There we go. So now into that very first half double crochet, you can always count backwards to know which one you have to slip stitch. Insert your hook into that stitch, pull up a loop and slip stitch that in place. So now here we have the very first round completed. What we are going to be doing now is chaining one. That's how we are going to be starting all the rounds. And then going to this very first stitch that you did the slip stitch. And you're going to be doing two half double crochets into this very first stitch. Now into the second stitch, two half double crochets. And then you're going to be doing the same all the way around, increasing into every stitch. So into the second round, you're going to be having 16 stitches. And then you're going to be finding that very first half double crochet. And then you're going to slip stitch both sides. Chain one and repeat again into that very first stitch where you did the slip stitch, two half double crochets. So this is an increase. And now for round number three, we are going to be doing increase and one half double crochet into the next stitch. Increase and one, increase and one all the way around. 
So the next stitch is going to be only one half of a crochet and then the following one is going to be an increase. Into the next stitch only one half of a crochet and then into the following an increase. And then repeat that all the way around. So for round number three we must have 24 stitches around. This is going to be my last one so it's going to be only one half double crochet into that stitch find the very first half double crochet and slip stitch now start again every round is going to be starting exactly the same as we did into this previous one so chain one and two half double crochets into this very first stitch where we did the slip stitch for the next round it's going to be increase and one half double crochet into the next two stitches. Increase and one half double crochet into the next two stitches around. So the increase is at the beginning already, so we are going to be doing one half double crochet into the next two stitches. Only one half double crochet. So the following one is going to be an increase, so two half double crochets into that same stitch. Now one half double crochet into the next two stitches and then an increase into the following stitch. And now continue repeating the same all the way around. So we should end up with two stitches left. This last one that I just made was an increase. So I have two stitches left. We are going to be doing one half double crochet into these last two stitches. So it follows the pattern perfectly all the way around. And then repeat the same, find the first half double crochet and slip stitch, chain one and two half double crochets into the very first stitch. Now for the next round, it's going to be increase and one half double crochet into the next three stitches. So let's go ahead and do that. We have the increase at the beginning and then one half double crochet into the next three stitches into the following stitch it's going to be an increase so two half double crochets and then one half double crochet into the next three stitches and repeat that all the way around so i have finished with three stitches at the end so i'm going to be doing one half double crochet into the last three so now find the first half double crochet, you go into a slip stitch, chain one, increase into the first stitch. And now we can move on into round number six. So this one is going to be increase and one half double crochet into the next four stitches. So let's do the one half double crochet into the next four stitches. And then the following one, it's going to be an increase. And then one half double crochet into the next four stitches. And you can repeat this all the way around. So now I have my last increase completed and now we have four stitches left. So you're going to be creating one half double crochet into the last four stitches. And then slip stitch into the very first half double crochet chain one and increase into this very first stitch now for the next round we are going to be doing one half double crochet into the next five stitches and then an increase into the following stitch so one two three four and five and then the following stitch is going to be an increase and then repeat that all the way around one half double crochet into the next five and then the following an increase repeat that all the way around and then i'll meet you right at the end at the end finish with your one half double crochet into the last five stitches
and then you go into slip stitch into the first half double crochet chain one and increase into the very first stitch half double crochet increase so now for round eight we are going to be doing increase in which is already here and then six half double crochets so one half double crochet into the next six stitches so one two three four five and six and then the following one is going to be an increase And then one half double crochet into the next six stitches and then repeat that same step all the way around and then I'll meet you right at the end so last increase done we now have six stitches left so we are going to be doing one half double crochet into these last six stitches and then we are going to slip stitch into the very first half double crochet and now we can check the measurement so here we have eight rounds in total and it's measuring oh my goodness it's measuring exactly what i need 15 and a half centimeters and you want to get to around this number 15 and a half 16 centimeters because this is more like a standard size for the crown of bucket hats and sun hats and all kind of hats like this one <laughs> so this is the standard size you want to get to 15 and a half 16 centimeters so you want to make sure that you have enough yarn to go around and sew the crown into the band so you're gonna get the yarn and you're gonna go around it around the crown like this four or five times if you want to make sure that it's going to have enough yarn do five times but four times works perfectly so two three and four times and then you can go ahead and cut it and now we can fasten off So I'm going to show you how you are going to be making the square and how you're going to be attaching right here in place. My square, it's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So I'm going to be starting with the hazel. So for the first round of the square, we are going to be creating a slip knot and chaining four. into the very first chain we are going to be making one double crochet so we are going to be working this first round into the very first chain and also the chain the three chains that is here at the beginning will count as the first stitch and then chain one into that same chain create two double crochets and then chain two here is going to be the first corner that we are going to be making and then into the very first chain again you're going to be making two double crochets and then chain one and two double crochets This is basically the little set for the shell that we are making for the very first round. And then you go into chain two. I need more yarn. <laughs> and then into the chain, we are going to be making two double crochets, a chain of one and two double crochets. And then you're going to be chaining two and creating another set of two double crochets, a chain of one and two double crochets. So to finish it off, you're going to chain two and then slip stitch into that chain that we left right at the beginning. So going to the chain, 
and slip stitch. And now we can chain one, cut off the yarn and fasten off. If you want to close more this little gap here in the middle, you can pull nice and tight the yarn that is here at the back because the double crochets are going around this yarn. So just pull nice and tight and then weave this yarn in when it's nice and tight like this. So now we are going to be bringing the beige. So create a slip knot. You can attach in any other way you prefer. I like to attach this way that I'm going to show you. So go into any of the chain two spaces and then you're going to be going around the chain two space, pull up a loop and then you're going to yarn over and pull through the two loops. So I like to attach my yarn with a single crochet just like this. Once you have the yarn attached in place, chain two and then into the same chain two space you're going to be doing two double crochets and then chain two and three double crochets into the same chain two space. So now you're going to be skipping all the stitches of the double crochets. We are just going to be working into the chain ones and also chain twos for the corners. So go into the next chain one space available and then you're going to be creating a double crochet, a chain of two and another double crochet into the same chain one space. So here we have created a V. And then into the corner, the chain two space, you're going to be doing three double crochets. A chain of two and three double crochets all into the same chain two space. And then into the next chain one space, every time you see the chain one space, you're going to be doing the V in which is a double crochet, a chain of two, and another double crochet. And then just repeat the same all the way around. When you get at the end, you're going to be having the chain space left, the one chain space. So you're going to be doing the V, one double crochet, chain two, and one double crochet. And then all you have to do now, it's into the chain right at the beginning, Right on top of that, you go into slip stitch and then chain one, cut off the yarn and fasten off. And bring the first shade again. So make a slip knot with the other shade and attach into any of the corners. I'm going to be attaching exactly the same as I did with the cream. Then I'm going to be chaining two and into the corner, I also feed my yarns into the beginning here, you will see. I did that for this one, as you can see, just here at the beginning, so that is easier to weave in at the end. Into the chain two space, the corner, you're going to be doing three double crochets. Now here is going to be a little bit different. Remember that we are counting the chain at the beginning as a stitch. So here we have basically four and then chain two and then into the same corner space, the chain two space, we are going to be doing four double crochets. And now we are going to go into the V chain two space. So we have the chain two of the corner and then the V also has a chain two. Into the chain two of the V, you're gonna go into that, skipping all the stitches of the double crochets. We are just using the chain two spaces around. I'm going to be doing five double crochets.
So now you go into the other corner. Into the corner, you're going to be doing four double crochets. A chain of two and four double crochets into the same chain two space of the corner. There we go. Now into the V chain two space, you're going to be doing five double crochets. And that's everything you have to do going around. Creating the corner with four double crochets, a chain two and four double crochets. And when you see the V, right into that chain two of the V, you're going to be making five double crochets. So now keep on repeating the same steps all the way around, and then I'll meet you here at the end. And then the last step is just to go into the chain at the beginning and slip stitch. Now we can chain one, cut off the yarn, and fasten off. And here we have the square now completed. You can weave in now if you want, or you can leave to do that at the end. Mine, it's already weaved in. I did that off the camera. And then you're going to be making four more squares exactly like this one. So I have here five squares in total. So to sew them together, I'm going to be doing with my tapestry needle and a little bit of the yarn, the same yarn I have, I have used for the last round. So go ahead and get two squares and a little bit of the yarn you have used on the last round. I already have a little piece here. So you want to make sure that you turn first on the reverse. And then you're going to be starting into the second chain of the square so we have a chain two here so you're gonna go into the second chain there we go into this square and then the second chain of the other square you're gonna leave a little tail so that you can weave in and here you're gonna make a knot i do a triple knot just to make sure that it's nice and secured in place and all we have to do now is to follow the stitches and sew them together i like to get the entire stitch so as you can see i like to get the entire stitch and then i just go through those two stitches and sew them together go into the next two sew them together then the next two, sew them together, now into the next two, sew them together, and then you're just going to be repeating that all the way down, matching the stitches. When you get at the end, you're going to be having the last two, so go into those, and then you're going to be getting the very first chain that you can find on both sides, and then sew the two together, you're going to go into that one more time, into those two, just one more time. Leave a little loop at the end and then you're going to go through the loop like this. And this is going to fasten off right at the end. And now you can weave in. So just, I like to weave in into the corners here. So I'm going to just move my yarn into the corner like this. And now you can just weave in. And now you can just cut off the yarn. And I'm also going to weave in the other side as well so that we don't have to do this at the end. So now here we have two squares sewn together. This is the reverse and this is the right side. As you can see, the sewing looks really good. So what you're gonna do now, turn on the reverse. 
don't forget about that. So now you're going to be bringing the next square and then make sure that that's on the reverse. So that in place exactly the same as you, as you did with this two and then bring the next one and the last one and do exactly the same. Once I have all my five squares sewn together, I will be back and then we are going to be moving on into the next step. So as you can see, I have finished sewing all of the squares together. All we have to do now is to sew the first with the last so that it creates the bund like this. So make sure that you have the right side facing you and then you're going to be folding the ends like this, put them together and now we can sew exactly the same as we did with all the other squares. All right, so now the band, it's sewed together. So it looks like this. You can turn on the right side, just if you wanna check it out, if all the sewings are nicely done, but you are going to be keeping on the reverse. You wanna place the crown also on the reverse. So the reverse here is going to be facing you, in which follows the band, so reverse and reverse. So you're gonna get now the clips and you wanna just clip this all the way around so that it helps to sew the two together going around. And something that you have to keep in mind is that the crown, the last round has 64 stitches and the band has 70 stitches. So we do have to skip six stitches in total. So when we get closer to the clips, we know that we have to skip one stitch of the band. We are not going to be skipping any stitch of uh, the crown because that's already enough. We just have to skip six stitches of the band, all right? So insert this yarn into a tapestry needle and now we can start the sewing process. I'm going to be just choosing any stitch of the band and inserting my needle into that and going all the way through that stitch. And then just choose the first stitch, for example, this one, it can be this one, go into that and again into that same stitch, the first one that you went through, just so that we can secure this yarn in place. Like this. And now we're going to be grabbing one stitch of the band, one of the crown. I'm grabbing both loops, as you can see. So I have two here and two here. And then sewing that together. Next two of both sides. Sewing that together. Next two, sewing that together. So we have five clips so I'm going to be skipping already one here at the beginning so that we can skip kind of evenly across so now to skip all you have to do is to skip one of the band you can see this is the next one so skip that go into the next and the next of the crown and sew that two together and that's all you have to do when skipping also when you get into the sewing here you want to get the stitch the chain one that is left you can cover that and then you're going to be skipping the sewing there is a little stitch here of the sewing so skip that and go into the chain one space that is left here of the other square the other corner make sure that you cover that too and then from here it's easier because you already have this square so I'm gonna go all the way around, repeating the same steps, making sure that I'm going to be skipping my six stitches in total around the band. And then I'm going to meet you right at the end once I have the sewing completed. So now I got two stitches left to sew together. So go into the second to last, sew the two together and the last two and sew them together. Go into that same stitch, the last one, one more time, create a little loop, go into the loop to fasten off and now we can weave this yarn in. So now the sewing is completed, this is the reverse, so you can see that the sewing is really nicely done. Now we can turn on the right side and this is how it's going to look. And you can see here that the sewing makes the crown and the band here in the corner really nice and 
rounded, exactly the same as a summer, a sun hat. And you can see that it's super sturdy, it stays like this. I love, love, love the structure that this yarn gives to projects. So make sure that this is on the right side. You're going to be turning so that the other side, the open side, it's at the top so that we can start the brim. And you can choose if you want to do in hazel or the beige. I'm going to be doing the hazel. So with the hazel, you're going to be making a slip knot. So choose any stitch to start with. I'm going to be doing this one. And for the first round, we are going to be grabbing the front loop only. And when you grab the front loop only all the way around, the brim is going to be nice and straight and is not going to go down. All right, this is the only reason why. And then I'm going to be attaching with a single crochet and chain one. And for this very first round, we are going to half double crochet all the way around. So front loop only into the next stitch, I'm going to be fitting the end into the stitches, my half double crochets, and then half double crochet into the next stitch, front loop only, half double crochet into the following stitch, front loop only, into the next stitch, half double crochet. And then just half double crochet all the way around. When you get into the corners, you're gonna get just the chain one spaces, going to the first chain one of this corner, and half double crochet, skip the sewing, going to the next chain one space of the other square, the next square, and half double crochet, and then follow the stitches of the square, and front loop only half double crochet across. So I'm going to half double crochet all the way around and then I'll meet you right at the end. So I got here at the end, my last stitch. So front loop only, half double crochet. And now we can slip stitch into that chain one that we've created at the beginning. So now when you're moving to the next round, you want to chain one and you wanna turn the project. So now you're going to be working backwards into the stitches and that's going to maintain the line the joining of the half double crochets nice and straight and not like we have into the crown you can see that it's not straight this line i don't mind here at the top where the crown is but the brim we can actually see so all you have to do right after so here's the right side when you chain one you are just going to be turning your project and we are going to be working towards this way now. And then the next one, you're going to be doing exactly the same. So chain one and then you're going to be turning and then you're going to be working on the right side. So let's keep it like this. So for the next round, we are going to half double crochet into that very first stitch right after the chain one, there is a stitch. So half double crochet into that. And now we have to start with the increases. So we are going to be doing one half double crochet into the next six stitches and then an increase all the way around. So we have one already. And now we are going to be using the entire stitch, not the front loop only anymore. So one, two, three, four, five, and six half double crochets. Now into the next stitch, we are going to be doing an increase. So that's two half double crochets into the same stitch. And now we have to do one half double crochet into the next six stitches. And then into the following stitch, we are going to be doing an increase. So two half double crochets into the same stitch. And just keep on repeating that same step all the way around and then I'll meet you right at the end. At the end, I don't have the correct stitch count, but we wanna make sure that this round it's correct all the way around. So we are going to be fixing into these last four stitches that I have here at the end. So I'm going to be doing increases all the way to the last stitch. So here is the last increase that I did. So we wanna make sure that we have the six stitches plus the increase at the end. So it's going to be correct. So it's going to be six stitches in which is going to be the six half double crochets and then an increase right at the end. 
just so that we fix the stitch count. So I'm basically finishing my last four stitches with half double crochet increases. So once you have completed fixing the stitch count, we can then go into that very first half double crochet, slip stitch, chain one, and then we are going to be turning the project. Then we are going to be creating a half double crochet into that very first stitch. And now we have to increase the amount of half double crochets in between the increases. Before we did six half double crochets in between the, the increases, now we have to do seven half double crochets in between the increases. So we have the first one, two, three, four, five, six and seven so one half double crochet into the next seven stitches and then the next one the following stitch it's going to be an increase so two half double crochets and now we do one half double crochet into the next seven and then increase into the following stitch and this is what we are going to be repeating for the next round so I'm going to be doing this one and then I will be back with you right at the end. You will see that at the end, now you are going to be having the correct stitch count. We are going to be having eight stitches here at the end, right after the last increase that you've created. So it's going to be one half double crochet into the next seven stitches and then an increase right into that last stitch. can see we have the last stitch this one is going to be an increase so two half double crochets and then you go into a slip stitch into the very first half double crochet you're going to then chain one and turn the project now for round number four we are going to be doing half double crochets all the way around with no increases. We are going to be doing now one round without increase and one with, one without, one with, until we have the sizing of the brim we want. So first you're going to be making a double crochet into that very first stitch. And then from here, it's easy. You can just half double crochet all the way around. So now here we have the last stitch, so the last half double crochet, find the very first one and a slip stitch into this first half double crochet. Chain one, turn project and half double crochet into the very first stitch. So if you want, if you are a beginner, make sure that you add a stitch marker into this stitch so you know that this is the last stitch and not this one. Just thought of adding that because that can be confusing when you're turning the project. So into the previous round that we did with increases, we did seven half double crochets and an increase into the next stitch. Now for this one, we are going to be doing one half double crochet into the next eight stitches. And the following one is going to be with an increase. And then that's the step for this next round. So we have the first one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight half double crochets. So one half double crochet into the next eight stitches. And then the following one is going to be an increase. So two half double crochets. And that's the pattern sequence. And that's the repeat for this round. So one half double crochet 
into the next eight stitches and then the following one is going to be an increase. So repeat that all the way around and then I'll meet you right at the end. At the end you should finish with nine stitches because we're doing one half double crochet into the next eight and then an increase at the end. So that's what I'm going to be doing here at the end. Now this stitch looks like that it's the last stitch but it's not because this one it's from the first half double crochet. So I just wanted to show you, this is the last one, the one that we've placed the stitch marker at the beginning. So now we're going to remove that and then we are going to be creating an increase here at the end. And then slip stitch into the half double crochet, the first one. So now currently from the very first round we've created for the brim, I have five centimeters of rounds. And I want to reach 10 centimeters because this is going to be a proper sun hat with a super large brim. <laughs> so I want to try to get to 10 centimeters. So what are you going to be doing now? I'm going to be leaving what you have to do now here on the screen. So now I'm going to be finishing off the brim off the camera because we are going to be following what we did into the second last two. Uh, rounds but every time you get into the increases you're going to be increasing the amount of half double crochets you are going to be doing in between the increases I'm going to be leaving exactly what you have to do for 10 rounds in total because that measures 10 centimeters and probably that's what I'm going to be doing uh, so I'm going to be leaving up to 10 rounds a little written pattern a quick one so you can see on how you're going to be doing the the brim so as you can see i have added more rounds to the brim and here i have nine rounds in total and now i'm going to show you the last one in which is round number 10 and the measurement right now it's nine centimeters for the brim i wanted to get to around 10 centimeters so with the single crochets it's gonna reach very close to the 10 centimeters mark so the single crochets i want it to be on the right side so i'm not going to be turning to create the single crochets so i'm going to be starting with the chain of one and into this very first stitch i'm going to be doing a single crochet and now i'm going to single crochet all the way around so i'm now here into my last single crochet and then when you get at the end just find that very first single crochet and then slip stitch into that one and now we can chain one cut off the yarn and we can fasten off and if you want you can already weave in and this is how the brim looks once you have 10 rows completed as you can see and now it should be measuring around nine and a half centimeters or something like that yeah so nine and a half so the idea that i had was to create some slip stitches kind of weaving through these little gaps of the half double crochets and like slip stitching around to create lines going around the um, the brim here and i think that's going to look really nice and i'm not going to do into every round i'm going to be doing in one and then skipping one and then doing into the next the skipping one doing into the next all the way up and then the last one is going to have a line too so go ahead and get the beige or the shade you are using create a slip knot and just release it from the hook and leave it like this choose which one you want to start i'm going to be starting into the very first one which is this one so insert your hook into any of the little gaps in between the stitches and then you're gonna get this slip knot and you're gonna pass it through and move up like this and the working yarn is going to be right under where that round is where you're going to be catching the the yarn so insert your hook into the next one right after the one you did and then you're going to be catching the yarn at the back move up pull up a loop and then slip into the second loop And then go into the next gap, grab the working yarn, pull up a loop and then slip into the second loop. 
going to the next one catch the yarn and slip stitch next one catch the yarn and slip stitch and it's going to create this beautiful effect and it's going to look amazing so that's what I'm going to be doing all the way around so you want to do the slip stitches all the way down so I'm right here now I have two stitches left so this one and then the last one in which is gonna be that one there you can see the loop still here so you want to get every stitch around now you want to release the loop from the hook and then you're going to go at the back and you're going to be inserting right in the middle of the first stitch just like this and then you want to move this loop to the back catch with your hook and move to the back and this is how the finishing is going to look and then here at the back if you want you can fasten off and then weave in this yarn or you can use the same yarn yarn to move into the next round i'm not going to be doing every single round i'm going to be skipping one and moving into the next but you can do all if you want so to move from one round to the other first you want to chain two so that's what i'm talking about you will have a little yarn showing here at the back that's why i'm telling you if you want to fasten off and weave in and then reattach the yarn you can i don't mind having this at the back but you can do however you want and then choose which round you want to go i'm gonna go into the third and then you're gonna catch the loop move to the front and now you can start again going all the way around and creating slip stitches just like this and then at the end you're going to be doing exactly the same and into every round is going to be exactly the same so i'm gonna go all the way around and then i'll meet you right at the end once i have this next line completed so now I got here at the end, I'm going to be repeating the same as I did into the first one. Go all the way down, even into this last one here that this loop is coming out of. And now you can just release the loop, go into the first one right in the middle of the stitch. Then you're going to be moving this yarn to the back. And then at the back, you're going to be chaining two and then moving on into the next line of slip stitches so as you can see it looks pretty pretty nice but this doesn't only work for the detail and is not only cute but it also works for the actual structure of the brim so this is going to maintain it really really nice and straight and is not going to be folding because yarn can fold sometimes this one is quite sturdy so it's not gonna fold anyways that easily but it does fold sometimes or like curls so this is also going to maintain it really nice and straight so i'm going to now continue with my slip stitches and then i will be back with you once this is finished so i'm getting towards the end of the fifth line of slip stitches in which is right here at the end of the brim so when you've done the last one you can then move exactly the same as we did to the other lines there we go now you can go ahead and chain one and cut off the yarn and fasten off and now you can weave in this yarn and the other one that we have. You wanna make sure that you weave into the beige. So you wanna make sure that you match the color of the weave-in. So this is how I weave in the lines. And then I go back, skip the first one, go back, and then I weave in back. And there we go. And now you can do the same 
with the one at the top. So this is how the brim looks like once you have added all the lines. In total, I have added five lines of slip stitches and I think this is just the cutest thing. Also not cute, but also helps with the structure of the brim. And when I fold the sun hat, this is how it looks like. And you can see that it's super sturdy. Look at that. It's really nice, actually. The yarn and also the lines that you create here, it helps to maintain it nice and straight. I'm going to be wearing this all summer long. I'm not lying to you. I'm going to wear the heck out of this. <laughs> so yeah, this is how you crochet an inspired straw sun hat. And I really hope you like it because it looks really cute and it's super, super nice and quick to make. And if you are wondering, you will only need 200 grams of yarn. Oh well, 162 grams of yarn of this Thai Sublime yarn by teslan.com to crochet this beautiful straw inspired hat and probably for cotton if you get like a um, worsted yarn then you're probably going to be using a similar amount or maybe even less because a worsted yarn is a little bit thicker than this and also if you have any suggestions for future videos leave in the comments too i love 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 knowing what you want to watch because i get inspired and then i can crochet something that you might like. So yeah, this is how mine turned out. I really hope you have enjoyed today's video. And if you did, don't forget to leave your massive thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to answer all of them for you. So thank you so, so much again for watching today's video and I'll see you on my next one. Bye-bye.